We got people on. Two. Thirteen, right on. What's up, guys? Chime in. Uh, let us know where you're tuning in from. Whoa. whoa. Well, it looks like we got Iowa, Arkansas, Alabama, Ohio. What's up, Jake, Zach, Evan, Larry, VA? What's that? Virginia, El Paso, Texas, Cincinnati. Right on, guys. Thanks for joining in. So I'm just hitting this with the 600 grit pad right now, scuffing down the the surface. These come with like just a, a coating on them, and so far so good. They're able to be just painted right over. But they do need to be scuffed, like I'm doing now. So I'm just wet sanding this with the 600 grit sanding sponge. You got a slide on Amazon? Okay, great. So whether you're watching us live on Amazon or um, just right here on YouTube, uh, you should be able to find the link either down in the comments or like I said, on Amazon you'll be able to see all these products that I'm using. They'll just be right down on the carousel. But on uh, on this hood panel, I was thinking of, so we're going to mix up some pigments, uh, a light blue, and then a purple uh, metallic pigment. We'll uh, tape out some, some lines, and uh, I'll kind of show you how to mix up that paint. Um, and then if we have time, we'll do um, some leafing maybe on these edges. And then I did want to implement um, this design somewhere into this, like either right here and there in a corner. We'll see how it goes. But for sure, I'm going to use this shade of pigment blue, which is just a bright blue. And I'm going to use this purple. And you can see what the contrast is here. It looks really nice. So this is going to be the base color. And this will be our uh complementary color which will be for shading and stuff like that but uh we'll go for this first but as you can see i knocked down the gloss off of this it looks good you gonna want to make sure you do that once that's done just hit it with some glass cleaner oh i love the smell of this stuff ah this stuff smells so good I don't know why okay. i don't know anybody agree with me let me know that stuff smells let's good go, go <laughs> <laughs> okay so someone's asking have you used cretex candy i'm having adhesion issues with it on metal flake with 2k clear after scuffing with red pad and 400 paper um you shouldn't be having problems most likely you're probably putting it on too fast um but uh yeah if you apply it too heavy too fast it's waterborne so it takes a while to evaporate um you cause an excessive build that's probably one of your other problems maybe excessive build is causing that adhesion issue uh I, that's why i don't really like waterborne to be honest but um it still works i've used it but without looking at it i'm not really not sure i'm gonna go ahead and hit these corners real quick because you can see they're still a little glossy And I want to make sure that the paint's going to stick all the way around on this thing. If you're doing customer parts, you want to make sure you're not missing the edges like that. You know, like say this is the inside of their fender. Perfect example. It looks just like it. You got to get in there and sand these edges. And if you're just painting right over it, say this is existing paint, you're painting right over it. You got to make sure you get all the chips and the rock chips and all the dings out of it the edges this one's not gonna have anything because it's just plastic you know but uh 
you can you'll have problems with adhesion on those edges but it's just a practice piece so it just needs to be pretty good i want it to be i don't want the paint to be flaking off and then that way i can use my glass cleaner again oh stuff smells good Someone hurry and ask your questions for you. You have to smell <laughs> that weirdo. <laughs> well, mm, smells so good. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's all dried off. Right on. We're going to move this to the side. And we'll mix up our first pigment right here. So this is just the uh, bright blue metallic. This is one I've already used, but they usually come full or pretty full. 25 grams of what they are. Okay, so uh, since I'm going to be spraying this out of a gun, I'm going to um, go ahead and mix this one into a uh, spray cup here. So it's just a cup with a liner with the lid that goes on top and then the ring. You guys, most of you all know that. Um, so let's go ahead and pour off. So with this, you can use any kind of inner coat clear that you have, whether it's House of Color, uh, Lime Line, um, Binder, any other brands, like, or, but you need, anyways, clear base coat or binder is gonna work for this. And I'm just gonna mix up, cause I don't need that much. Just a little tiny hood. So I have like, I have about two ounces maybe in there. No, no. Someone said they use the same glass cleaner at their work and it's look good. <laughs> yeah, I know it does. All right, and then we're going to use some reducer. To reduce down that mixture. Yeah, he's right. That stuff, it smells excellent. Okay. So this is just clear base coat with reducer. We, we thinned it out. So we have about, uh, let me look on the side here. Looks like we have about three ounces or so, maybe almost four ounces. So we're gonna take our scoop, our scoop right here. So um, usually you'd wanna use a filter, well, a strainer like this. Um, but since these already have the strainer built into the lid, you, we don't have to worry about it. So check it out. So yeah, usually you'd want to not, not strain the powder. You'd want to put it in, in there, mix it all up. And then before you put it in your last container, you want to strain it. But like I said, that has a filter right there. You can see it. it's built in. So that makes it super nice since we're going to be spraying it. Okay. Take the scooper. We got about almost four ounces so we're gonna go with almost four scoops one two three we'll go four because one of those were pretty measly okay let's check that out oh yeah that looks good we're gonna spray it this blue right over that black panel. So hopefully we get good coverage there. We'll definitely know. Okay, it looks like that melted in there pretty good. Someone said, how is SEMA? Hope it went well for you guys. Yeah, it went great. Talked to a few people. It's huge. First time I've ever went and it was yeah. Yeah. crazy. It's, it's so huge. It still blows me away. Yeah. Okay, so we got this in the, um, the cup here. We're gonna go down to the booth. Let me grab my gun. I'm gonna go ahead and, is this clean? Did I even clean this? What the? 
Well, we're going to go for it. Hopefully it's clean enough and the spray is good. I didn't clean it last time I used it earlier today. It was just base coat. But all right, I'll be right back. I'm going to go get this set up in the booth and I'll be back for the panel um, and the camera. Mm hmm. All right, I'm back. So the panel, uh, you guys are coming with me. So there we go. We're gonna head down to the booth. Back. All right, we're gonna navigate these stairs. Check it out. That's uh, some of you guys maybe remember that video. That's the image transfer. We're not going to get sidetracked here, though. All right, close your eyes. It's really messy in here. Oh, we need that. We need that. Okay. All right, I'm going to put you down real quick. Whoa, we're all over the place. Okay, uh, here I'm set up in the booth. You can see how little that mini hood is. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and throw just a couple of coats on there. Now you can see how fast that's starting to cover. I'm gonna go turn the booth fan on because uh, it's stinky in here. So let me, uh, hold up, come with me. Oh. Oh. There we go. Close your eyes. All right, it's probably pretty loud in here for you guys, but you can see that's coat number one. And I think it's already ready because I put it on pretty light. That's how base coat goes on. It goes on uh, in lighter coats. You're not trying to get it like super wet. You want it to flash off quick. See, you know, obviously, some modeling in there. We're only in our first coat. We'll put uh, two more on, most likely. We'll see what it looks like right now. Okay, for the sake of time, we're going to go ahead and go with that um, because I really want it to dry fast enough that we can put some tape on there and not have to wait for like 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, so I feel like this could be good enough, but um, if this was something important rather than just this mini hood, then I would definitely put another, uh, at least one more coat on it after it flashes off. But we're good right now. I'm going to go ahead and take this back up.
Oh, I got to turn the booth back off. Okay. All right, sorry about that. Hey, Ash, I'm back. Oh, yeah. We're back. Do we have any questions? I haven't even looked. Uh, I'm tired now. Someone <sighs> just asked a little bit ago, what got you into custom painting? Uh, auto body um, repair. That's how I got started. Like, just doing auto body repair. And then I took a custom class. It was pretty fun. I rose class and then found out I can make a living doing it. So that's what I did. Someone said, he says, close your eyes. Laugh out loud. If it if it's cause of that little clutter, I'd hate to show my shop. <laughs> yeah. That's a... That's the like worst room in this whole place. They said they'd hate to show their shop if you're just seeing that. Yeah. Well, and this shop stays pretty clean, but oh, well, that's bad in there. Okay, so it looks like that's uh, flashed off pretty good. Um, it's not going to be perfect. You can see there's a little bit of modeling in it and stuff, but we're fine for what we're doing. Let me catch my breath here, and then we'll uh, you know, grab some eighth inch. Okay, I got some eighth inch tape and I'll do the normal, looks like there's something in it right there. Someone's asking you, is a gloss cleaner with or without ammonia? It's without. <laughs> I wouldn't like it if it had ammonia in it. That'd, that's too nuts for me. <laughs> uh, let me... Uh... I'm going to go ahead and just tape down these corners. Okay, I'm using some eighth inch tape here. And we're going to go directly over the base coat. Same thing like I usually do because it seems like it it uh, panels out pretty good right here with the styling of this little mini hood. Take the exacto, trim it up. We'll go ahead and do the same thing on this side. Know where you got that hood? Uh, you can get them on Amazon through Limeline. I didn't link that in that Amazon. I should have. But yeah, you can just uh, you can basically just Google Limeline hood. You'll find it. Okay, I got those two taped out. Looking good. And what I want to do is I kind of want to break it up a little bit more. So I'll come around this edge. That looks good. And I'll do the same thing right here. Okay, good enough for that. Uh, maybe, I think that's good. We'll go ahead and go with that. Um, and we'll do some of these other designs in there. Let's go ahead and cut these here. 
to know if you're going to have a Black Friday sale. Yeah, for sure. That's coming up, huh? Yeah. Coming up fast. I'm going to take some 16th inch tape. Let's try that again. Right, I think that's good enough. What we'll do is, I did want to implement, um, oh, it got a little wet. Dang it. What was that sitting on? Oh, I sat that rag or that sponge right on there. Uh, it still should work. I got it pretty wet, it's my last one. I wanted to implement this stencil since I just had it laying around from the last job. Um, maybe have it like, like some of it poke out right here and then a little bit right here and then we'll do lace in the middle i'll edge it out in the purple and then if we have time i'll do the leaf on both of these we'll see how how late it is this, this is going pretty fast though so um let's go ahead and transfer this to that um i'll kind of what i'll do is i'll kind of look here and see like how i would want this to to look Okay, I think I like it right there. I'm just going to cut this. Score that right there so I can... Turn this one into two because... If I'm going to do that over here, I probably want just a little splash of something up there. Or maybe the other way. Let's see. Now I like to look better like this. Okay. I'm going to go like that. There. And then. This will just come out of right there. And just kind of finish off that corner. And then the rest of this will be lace. So pretty easy. Um, this will just add like a little more detail in it. Because these filigrees are pretty cool. And the nice thing is. This is the first time I've ever done these, or besides that last tank. Um, it has the center mark. So what we'll do is we'll edge it out in a purple-black kind of a mixture. Uh, take our purple and then put a couple drops of black into it. Do the outline first, and I'll show you this. And then we'll pull out the inside, leaving the border, and then fill in the inside with just the purple, just kind of blending it in. Um, it should be really cool looking because this is not like a normal metal flake kind of job. It's like this is just metallics that's painted and mixed out of out of pigments so okay let's plan on that uh i'll get some tape just take some normal this is the vibac inch and a half you can use transfer tape too or whatever just whatever you got whoops Someone said, if you're just starting out to airbrush, what paint brand would you choose? I really dig the House of Color line and my focus is motorcycles, automotive work. Not a newbie to paint, just airbrushing. Yeah, I would probably, House of Color is good. Um, if you're wanting uh, candies, House of Color is great, or Tamco, one of those companies like that. Um, 
if you if you're looking to do jobs like this what i'm doing here i mean the pigments are the way to go because this is literally 17 dollars, and you can mix it per scoop like you, you only need a little bit to do this little project so you're doing a, a motorcycle you could probably get away with not even using this whole thing um saving the pigment rather than a liquid is going to last you a lot longer and then uh just be creative with what you can do with uh you know layering and stuff like that rather than spending all the money um getting custom colors made because that can get really expensive all right so i just lined that out on top of that and the plan is that it's sticky enough that it's gonna come on all right, I'm gonna have to put a little pressure on this. Someone asked, can you gold leaf inside the stencil instead of airbrush? I'm not sure if they're asking yeah. if you can do that or if they want you to do that. I'm not sure. Um, you know, I wasn't sure I could probably do that. Yes, and I, I, I what my plan was to do that one of these times um, and it can be done. The thing is, is it does take some time because you gotta make sure you get your corners in really good. Um, but maybe in the next one we'll do some filigree with uh with leafing inside this one i think we're already committed or i would maybe would have entertained that but yeah yeah so what we're doing here you can definitely do that uh, he just said he was just wondering if it could be done yes absolutely it can be done and we should do it, just not right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna do it, maybe a mini helmet on the next one. I don't know, maybe we can make it work on that. That'd be a little more difficult. Okay, this is taking me longer than I thought, but we're getting it. I don't wanna lose any of this. Oh, there we go. Okay, we're good. Get rid of that. All right, so I'm thinking I was just going to put it just like Oh, come on. You want to make sure you keep the whole stencil there. Oh, get back on there. There we go. What, what up, Ralph? Ralph? Ralph just sent 20 bucks. Thank you so much for that super chat. I appreciate that. Every little bit helps. Someone asked if you have a Facebook page somewhere i think i do <laughs> so, i think if you look it up I, there's not gonna be anything on it oh look that's a little bit short right there that's not what i see i wanted that to line up with that that's okay it'll look fine i could go in there with tape and then make and then but i'm not gonna do that we're just gonna see what it looks like it's gonna look fine someone wants to know if you're gonna sell that stencil yes like oh, that i was thinking about it yeah absolutely i told him we should yeah it's a cool one mm. we're gonna take this little chunk here that we saved <laughs> yeah You're just nicer to look at than me. No, I'm your boss. Okay, so I don't really want to make a mistake with this one, so I'm gonna I'll put it right there. Asked if 
you offer vector files to cut your own stencils? Um, no. I feel like that's too much computer stuff for me. <laughs> I wouldn't know how to even do that. I, I can barely even get by making these. But um, hopefully I can make them affordable enough. But yeah, the fact of having the vector file, you'd be able to make them any size you wanted. I'm trying to get this piece of tape off of there. There we go. You can, yeah, if you had the vector file, like he's saying, you'd be able to make them any size you wanted. Just You just blow it up. It's, it'd be, it would be pretty awesome. Okay, uh, we got that lined out. Um, next thing is, I think we're... We're good. I'm gonna we're gonna mix up some purple. Let's get rid of this stuff. I'm gonna pull this up right here. Let me get this tape off of here. We don't want that. Okay, a little bit of cleanup there. Looking good. All right. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put this right here. And we got our, make sure it's the right one, purple metallic base coat so if you don't remember what we're doing all here it says it right on the side here check it out one scoop one ounce pretty easy if you can do simple math you can mix this really easy so once again i've been scooping through this one usually they come a lot fuller um 25 grams we're going to mix this one up in a smaller cup because we only need a little bit of airbrush paint so that's what's nice about these We'll get two cups here because we're going to want to filter it, like I said. We'll go ahead and stick the filter right there. Let's get that ready. Take some clear base coat. Grab some reducer. And this is just urethane reducer. Gonna mix up that mixture a little bit with just the clear base coat. We'll take our scooper. And we have about one and a half to two ounces in there. So we got one and we'll do one and a half. Oops. Okay. You see that getting mixed up in there. There's a couple of questions. So someone says, what material or brand would you recommend for stencil cutting with a Cricut? They tried regular vinyl and had a real bad time with adhesive residue. Um, Oracle brand. Um, Oracle brand has a, uh, removable vinyl. I think, I think it's six one one is the number. I don't know though. The six something, but, uh, I think there's another brand Frisket. I think Frisket has one too, but Oracle is kind of I think the name brand and that removable. 
vinyl. Okay, okay so, so we, we have that mixed up pretty good. We're going to go ahead and pour it in here. That way we're only getting nice, clean paint with no chunks. It's not that chunky. That's definitely not chunky. Someone said, uh, let's see, I also don't have a setup with a gun or big compressor yet. Rattle cans are expensive. Can I buy a metal flake airbrush to achieve what your tanks look like with the metal flake? No, not with an airbrush. You need a paint gun. You're going to need a paint gun and stuff sooner or later. You can practice on your airbrush skills and your taping without all that. But eventually you're going to want to upgrade. Or just not do flake. You can still get some really nice results like we're doing here um, in a in a flaky pearl. And you could do it all with an airbrush. Um, and then maybe do the clear coat with a spray can. With like something. With something like this, which is, a, this is only a 1K. But you can, you know, spray it with a spray can. Do everything with an airbrush. Mix the pigments. So you, you could, but you just wouldn't be able to do the metal flake. Okay, so I got my airbrush cleaned out. I'm using a cheapo Neo. I think it's a 1.3 or no, 0 0.035 tip gravity fed. It's because it's a gravity. Okay, enough of that. Let's mix up some paint in here. Um, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I wanted to do. That's okay. We'll go ahead and line this out now, and then we'll put a couple of drops in our airbrush. I wanted to do a little bit of black up in here, in the purple. That way, it's a little bit more contrast here and here. But we'll uh, we'll wait. Okay, that seems like that's reduced pretty good. Um, if it was too thick or too thin. If it's too thick, it makes it all splattery. If it's too thin, you could always deal with it by turning your air pressure. You know, either uh, you want to turn it up a little bit. But this is looking good. Flowing nice. So I'm just going to follow my tape edges here. Someone said one of the favorite, one of his favorite techniques he learned from you was mixing a little compound in water and brushing some random spots on and spraying over it and then wiping it off. Yeah, that's cool. Man, it's easy. That's what's so fun about it. So I'm just aiming for the tape lines here and letting the purple kind of just blend out. Uh, the blue is the limelight metallic bright blue. The pigment mixed with uh, clear base coat, inner coat clear, or whatever you you really prefer on that. So I usually had hit those two, but I'm gonna wait because I'm gonna put a little bit of black in it as well. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Here we go. Let's put that back. <laughs> I don't know. Almost fell down. 
All right. So while I'm doing that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay down some lace right here. I've got some lace in the drawer. Right there, watch. Yeah, whatever you want. Pick one. Okay, that one's good. All right, we got some lace here, and we're gonna accent just this backdrop right here. Uh, I usually would tape it up, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I might put a piece of tape though, actually, to hold it down tight. That way I can stretch that a little bit. And I can see my lines, so. Oh, shoot. See, there's a lesson right there. You, before you start your lace, make sure your paint's full. Because once you get to stretching it, I just barely started, but once you stretch it, it's hard to find, uh, find it and connect it back into where it was. All right, let's try that again. I don't want it too strong. I probably have already hit it harder than I've wanted to, but okay, let's check that out. Oh yeah, just a little bit. You'll only be able to catch it in certain light, especially once it's, once it's clear coated. But I'm going to go ahead and hit this with some glass cleaner right now and get rid of... See how there's just a little bit of overspray and stuff right there? It's not really overspray. It's like dried up overspray. We're just going to take some... Ooh, some glass cleaner. I'm going to use that. Okay, question, comment. Someone looking. said, that's why I take my lice down so it doesn't move. Tape it down. Yeah, tape it down. That's what I did. Okay. Well, I probably could have hit it a little harder like right there, but no, that's going to look good. All right. Let's go ahead and put a couple of drops of black. So I'm going to take this, put a couple of droplets of black in there, and then I'm going to go over the, the edges here. All right, I got some black paint here. We're just gonna move that off to the side. We'll I'm just gonna put a couple drops in there. Three or four, four drops. Looks like I missed someone's question. Let's see what he asked. Someone asked how much to paint a motorcycle gas tank with the Captain America flag from Easy Rider. Uh, somebody would probably charge you around. I think it all depends, like what your parts, the condition of your parts, and everything. But I would say like a tank and a back fender would be like twenty five hundred bucks. I don't know. I'm not currently taking on any jobs. There might be somebody here that can do it for you. What I'm doing, I'm just kind of following around the edges on this. Kind of like what I did on the other stuff. This is just a hair bit darker because I did put a couple of... Uh, 
drop, like I said, drop to the black base coat in there. Someone said, does high, let's see, does higher quality equipment allow for higher quality results or does better equipment just make life easier on you? Uh, that's a good question. Um, it all depends on what equipment it is. Like with an airbrush, I definitely go with an Iwata, even if it is on the cheaper end. Um, and it wouldn't be that necessary to get the nicest airbrush to get really nice results. Um, same thing with a spray gun, you know, there's entry level guns. It all kind of depends on what you're doing. Um, mostly no, I guess the, the overall answer to that would be no, you can get away with, I know some guys that paint with just Harbor Freight guns, the cheapest Harbor Freight gun can, you can literally paint a whole car with that and it'd be fine. But yeah, you're, it's going to have its limitations. If you're just doing it for a hobby and on the side, buy the cheap stuff, man. I mean... Not worth going out and buying a, you know, seven, eight hundred dollar gun, thousand dollar gun, uh, unless you're really wanting that. I mean, that's fine. I don't do it. I'm using the cheapest Neo, you know, because I know I can use it. And it, and it, when it wears out in six to eight months, I'll just buy a new one because it's only seventy dollars compared to, you know, I've had a Micron and I love them. And it is a better airbrush than this, uh, but it's kind of unnecessary. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and peel the uh, the inside of this real quick. So someone just said a little trick to keep the lace in place is to use a light fabric tack spray. Yeah. And then we were talking about that. Um, let me find it. Sam Fisher asked how much to paint that tank, and you said you didn't have time. So Austin on here said he'd like to take it. Oh, there you go. There you go. It's Captain America. It's not that hard to do. And then someone just said, not sure if, if this was asked, but can you mix flake with the pigments? Yes. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can even mix candy with pigments. And someone asked, is it possible to buy Limeline products in bulk and save some money? Um, on some of the stuff, you can buy it on subscription on Amazon, and you can save money that way, like 10%. Like I know on the sizing glue, you can go on there and you can sign up for a subscription of like every three months and that's going to save you 10% every time. Well, I think it's going to save 10% from me and then another 5% from Amazon. So like 15%. Uh, but bulk, yeah, it's hard to do because I'm mainly an Amazon seller. Uh, but uh, possibly if you want to hit me up. I might mess this up or not say it right, but someone said, what's your thoughts about a harder and Steenbeck airbrush? Oh, yeah, the airbrush. I've never used it. Um, they've been around for a long time, so I'm guessing they're good. And I'm sure it works just fine with what you're doing. You just don't want to buy the Harbor Freight airbrush. You can buy the Harbor Freight paint gun. Don't buy the Harbor Freight airbrush. It's too fine of an instrument. Doesn't uh, it's just too fine of an instrument to to everything needs to be in place and has to be it's like the right material and uh, I think a lot of it really has patents on a lot of their stuff so it's it's hard for these cheap companies to go in and do what they're doing because when you like I said when you're finding you're when you're spraying out a tiny little tip like that you know all it takes is a one little difference in engineering that screws everything up. And someone just asked, do you use automotive paint? If so, do you use solvent or water-based? Uh, I use solvent-based. Automotive paint, yeah.
Yeah, water base just takes too long. And he, I don't know. I'm old school. Almost got this. We got this one right here, and then just that top part. And then someone just said, thoughts on battery powered airbrush. I bought one. I think it works amazing other than the fact that it dies after about an hour after use. Um, I have one too. And I was able to make it work for a while. And then it just seemed like it quit working for me. Because it's, uh, I don't know, it's just one of those things. It's like it works for a while and then something goes wrong and then. And it just quits working as good as it used to. Uh, and then the other thing is, is like, usually, like, sometimes you have to get needles and replacement stuff, and it's hard to get them for those. If I was to do that with a battery powered one, I'd probably get like, uh, and like, not one that's hooked to the airbrush. You can get one of those smaller ones that are battery powered, they're just a little small unit. This is what I'm looking for right there. Someone asked if you're wearing a mask right now while you're airbrushing the automotive paints. Right now? No, not this current moment. But I'm also not airbrushing right now. But uh, yeah, it's a good idea. Really with an airbrush, it's coming out pretty, pretty fine. I'm not getting a whole lot of overspray. But um, you should always really wear a mask if you're spraying. <clears throat> okay, so we got that. That's looking good. Hopefully we got enough contrast there. It looks, it's looking good. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump out what I have in the airbrush because I do have a little bit of the darker mixture in it. Somebody asked, do you just guess on the reducer? Uh, the answer to that is yes, I do. After a while, you just get the, you get the feel for it. You can kind of even look like when you pour it in, you can tell like, oh, that's a little thick. You know, even though I, I can tell right now that is a little thick. I'm going to put some blue in here as well. Oh, I have blue? Downstairs. Downstairs. That's all right. I don't have to put blue. I'll just thin this out. Yeah, while it was sitting in the cup, it did thin out a little bit. So I'm going to just a little bit of reducer. What's that? Thinned out. Oh, no, no. It uh, thickened up. Yeah, while it was sitting in the cup, it thickened up. Does I say thin out? Mm -hmm. oh. It's definitely thinned out now. So I'm just going to go over these middle parts that didn't get any paint. So that way we have some contrast there. Oh yeah, this is super thin. Someone asked, what do you do to prevent metal flake clogging up your gun? I find that if I let the gun sit with my metal flake clear coat mix for longer than five minutes, it plugs up the tip. On the airbrush? Is that the sand? Or the... Um, if you're spraying metal flake out of, sometimes if they're big flakes, you need a bigger tip of gun. Did I say that right? He a bigger said, tip on your gun. gun. He says, I find myself shaking the gun constantly oh. to just just so the flake doesn't settle yeah 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 it's gonna have to keep it agitated um some flake is different than other flake and it um sinks i guess is the best way to describe it is it sinks and it doesn't want to stay suspended in in the uh the clear coat so that could be part of the problem but you always kind of want to do that though really like when I flake something, I'm always shaking the gun. 
Uh, he said it's a. He says no standard paint gun with 1.5 tip and the limeline metal flake. It's spitting. Yeah. What What's he mixing it with? In the with the clear coat. He says I. He said, "What do you do to prevent metal flake clogging up your gun? I find that if I let the gun sit with my metal flake clear coat mix for longer than five minutes, it plugs up the tip." Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to. You, you want to turn it upside down if you're using the PPS cups. Um, you would just turn your gun upside down while you're waiting in between codes. That's what I do. If you if you're not, you're gonna want to pour it back into your cup and not let it because what it's doing is just settling down and it's yeah, it's gonna if you're using just especially a regular cup too, it's all gonna settle down up in there. Someone Austin said he puts a few nuts in the cup to help it. Oh yeah, yeah that's good idea. Um, okay, let's see. I skipped a couple. Let's see. Someone said, do you have a cleaning station for your airbrush? Uh, no, it's just usually just a rag. I just spray it in a rag. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pull these inner ones because that's all we're going to do. There's not really going to be much to this one. It'll look better once it's all cleared. I am going to do some leafing around the edges, kind of spruce it up there. We'll go ahead and pull these. Someone else asked, where can I buy those little cups that you're using? Uh, you can get those through Limeline as well. And then someone said, can I spray 0, 0. 0.8 metal flake with Iwata Neo airbrush? No. Nope. You're not gonna be able to really, really spray any flake with the airbrush. Just a, this small metallic would be it. Uh, the only way to do it would be to blow it onto wet clear coat, and then you wouldn't need you need a gun anyways. And someone said, "How old are you?" I saw your video where you you painted your grandson's bumper car. Loved it. Laugh out loud. But it made me wonder: Are you a vampire? <laughs> you look great for a granddad. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, how old am I? Yeah, I knew you were gonna ask <laughs> me. <laughs> Shit, I don't even know. He's forty-three. I poked myself right when you said that. <laughs> You're old enough to forget how old you are. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. You can see how subtle that is. Once uh, once this is clear, cause it's gonna look great. Um. I'm gonna, I am gonna lay down some leafing, so stick around because it looks like we do. How long we've been on for? Not an hour, right? Okay, so we got, we got all night. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do have 20 minutes to lay out some leafing and spin night. it though. Got all night. It's starting to be past your bedtime. Yeah. <laughs> Not nice. <laughs> okay. All right. Doesn't look like much, but what? But uh, we're gonna get that clean, that overspray clean off. We're gonna do some leaf right there. Why did, you, why did you choose Limeline as a name? Um, the first product that I started selling was that green tape. And it all kind of spawned off that. I don't know. What do you think of the name, I guess? I could have named it. I'm not even going to make up stuff because maybe I'll see something better. I'm going to say, dang it. Looks like we got a chunk of something in there. Piece of paint. Probably can't see it in the video, but um, that's going to affect the way that leaf looks because you literally have to lay the leaf down on a really smooth surface. But you'll, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. It'll be a good example.
Someone said when you hit 45, you'll be going to bed early. <laughs> he already does go to bed early. What are you talking about? Then someone said, Austin said, thanks for taking the time to help us learn. You'd help me step up my custom game way up. He's forever grateful. Yeah, right on, man. Hopefully you get that paint job, too, that uh, from... Man, I lost the name cover in the chat, but... The American flag. No, not American flag. American... American what? No, never what it was. Maybe yeah, it was. Okay. And then the guy that asked about the line line name, he said, the name isn't bad. Just wanted to know the story. Oh. And someone said, I just joined in. Did you buy those stencils and where and what's the proper name of them? Of the which stencils? I think you're filigree. It's called filigree, I guess. Is that what he's asking? Or he wants to know where you bought them. Oh, I made it. Off of a cricket machine. And I'm gonna I'll get on them to put those to put those out, up, out. I can talk. Uh, someone said, how long do you wait for base to be taped over to avoid lifting? Uh, just so it's dry. Like, depends on how heavy you spray it. I mean, I was taping on this like in five minutes. Cause I sprayed it pretty light. And then someone else just said, you are not afraid of pulling up that airbrush work with the red tape without waiting at all? No. I'm not afraid, but this doesn't mean it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> He's a rebel. Then I'll just have to show you how I fix it. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and clean out my airbrush. Usually I have a separate airbrush for my sizing glue because it is waterborne. He's a rebel. But once again, there he goes. <laughs> Once again, I did not clean that airbrush good enough to be on the spot to make it good. So I'm going to have to clean this one up, get all the paint out of it. What I'm doing right now? Yeah, you can see right here. So I'm just, I'm just uh, spraying into the rag. Yeah, I'll put it right here in the middle. Right on your feet? Yeah. <laughs> Just spraying it in the rag right here. Yeah, see, like, this is just some uh, lacquer thinner, or you could just use the reducer. And then with the same rag, I usually just wipe it down, you know. Clean it up. Clean off the tip. So I'm going to ask, where'd you get the stamp and the video for the, you know how you did the tinfoil? Oh, you yeah. Just on Amazon. It's just called a, it's called a uh, foil embosser folder. That's the technical term. So if you look up folder, no, no, no. What did I just say? <laughs> I can't remember now. Embosser. embosser. Foil embosser folder. <laughs> Here to be half the brain, I guess. <laughs> That's a scary thought. Okay, someone said, um, "Does airbrushing make your garage smell like painting with a gun wood?" Uh, no, no, no. I wouldn't. I would say no. But it depends on how you're airbrushing. If you're airbrushing like crazy, you could, it could just as much. Yeah. But I wouldn't worry about it too much. I don't know. It's up to depends on your neighbors. Uh, so I'm going to mix this in the cup and then cause it mixes 50, 50 with water. It's too thick. Like, look at that. Too thick. Let's put some water in there. Let's see where's my water at. Get some out of the fridge. Okay. So that looks like about 
Oh, that might not have been enough. Someone said, I've been thinking about starting my own business. I have some clients. I could have contacts, but I'm nervous to make that leap. But you've inspired me in so many ways to think about it. Yeah, you should just do it. It's scary. Um, the busiest time for custom painters are going to be is going to be like in um, late January, February. It's that's when everybody gets busy. I feel like that's when I always get so, so busy. And then it starts to cool off like in end of July, August, and then uh, September. But it's super hot. Like, like you'll get a lot of work between February and June. Like crazy. Everybody's wanting work done. You just got to market yourself. Yeah, I have a good quote. But I'm going to ask my daughter to send it to me. I'll tell you, it's a good quote for that. It's a good quote? Yeah. Okay. Are you saving that for the end or what? Okay. Austin we'll said, stick around for stick around to the end for Ashley's quote. Yeah, stick around for a good quote here uh, about taking a leap, following your dreams or something. It's good. There you go. Anyways, Austin said, at Dan Do It, I got fired for zero reasons two years ago, and I took the leap to start my own shop, and I've not slowed down since. Yeah, right on. Sometimes getting fired is like the best thing ever. It's better than oh, quitting. Here. <laughs> Here's the quote. The quote is... You're supposed to keep them hanging till the end. Oh, okay. It's okay. It's okay. Nope. Go ahead. I'm going to save it till the end. All right. Save it till the end. Do you want to hear my quote? How many people <laughs> will stick around? I don't care about what I have to say. Okay. Like I said, there's a little paint chunk right here. I'm going to go ahead and leave it. But right now, I would sand that out. Um, something happened. I, like I said, my gun wasn't 100% clean when I put that paint in there. But this is all practice. All right. I filled up the uh glue mixed 50 50 with water it's in the airbrush um i'm gonna go ahead and lay this down one thing you do want to remember is you don't want to over apply it see like right here can you see that you can't even see where i'm pointing let's see okay there we go see that where it's all bunched up you don't want that that's how your that's how your leafing is going to look all textured this has to go on like like it has to go on smooth like it has to atomize enough to where it's not wet enough that it'll bunch up together once it's on make sense okay so i'm going to make sure it's clean because that's important any kind of debris or, or, or hair or anything that falls into this glue it's going to show through so you're going to want the surface to be really smooth and the glue to go on really smooth and even so let's do it There's the first coat on that side. And there's the first coat on that side. So we're gonna let that flash just a little bit. We sprayed it so light that it's gonna dry super fast. That's what we want. Okay, let's go with another coat here. Let me turn the air pressure up just a little bit. There we go. Okay, this side. So you can see that it's not sprayed on. See how that's not even dry yet? Like it's, when you spray it on that thick, it just doesn't dry. It just doesn't, that's not what you want. So we have two coats on there. We could get by with two coats. We're gonna go ahead and do one more here in just a second. Okay. Like I said, when you spray it light, it dries fast. Okay, 
Oh yeah. What do we got here? Some roll leaf. Uh oh. We're just going to let that set up just a little bit longer. So the way you test this is if you um, were to touch it and pull up, and if it strings up, it's too early. you got to let it wait a little bit longer. But it's actually just about ready here. All right, so I'm using this loose leafing booklet from Limeline. It has 100 sheets in there. And it has just like another, um, in between each sheet, there's like a piece of uh, wax. It's not wax paper. It's something like wax paper. Tissue. Yeah, yeah, tissue. So we'll go ahead and set that right there. Maybe we'll set it right here. Let's see. So let me put it right here so I can get a good. Whoops. Let me see. I can use this one over here. Oh, never mind. You grab She's gone. Grab two. We're going to make it the length. Oh, hopefully. Let's Almost. See. <laughs> I'm not going to. Dang close, though. It's okay. We're going to waste this whole sheet for that little guy. People are going to get really mad at me <laughs> every time. <laughs> Every time I do this, people you're, are like, "Look at what you waste!" You're kind of out I mean, of the. It kind of does, though. You're kind of out of the picture, so you might be saved. Oh, okay. Can't good, really see it. <laughs> uh, people knowing, I'm wasting. Oh, little piece right there. Okay, now they're watching. So, Couple. I'm gonna show them. I'm gonna show them. I just saved this piece. Put it right there. Can't really see it. Ah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Somebody asked, um, "Do you need to do a, a a lint wipe or a tack cloth before you put the glue down?" You can, yeah. Yeah, that would probably be a good idea. All right, I'm going to take this brush right here. Burnishing brush, and we're just going to kind of tap it in. I like to kind of like poke at it. That way I can get it, get it shoved into the edges there. Because if you wipe it, sometimes it wipes it away before um, it's pushed down into the glue. And then it rips. So I like to kind of just like just hammer it down like that. Let's, looks like we got a little chunk right here. We missed. We'll go ahead and fill that in. Scroll back through. Um, someone said, when you first started your business, did you make sure you build up the clientele and went from there, grinding and putting in the work, advertising? Um, 
not really <laughs> kind of just jumped into it had a couple of jobs i think but um yeah, it kind of makes you have to work you know and have to you'll find it put yourself out there on social media if you're halfway decent painter there's enough people out there yeah chris said i did one first job that turned out great after that after the guy writing it around passed my name i stacked up six jobs immediately retirement gig for me yeah right on a good one too Someone said, can this glue also be used to put my life back together? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but you need 150 balls. <laughs> <laughs> well. No, don't buy 150 balls. I'm going to use this roller right here just to kind of really get a good contact between the glue and the and the uh, leafing there. Also, you can work your edges down in a lot better. Someone said um, they love that brush and roller they bought from you. They also said, what other kinds of things can be done to leaf besides turning it? I just think turning it's so great that I just can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, there's leaf out there that's like the variegated. It's pretty cool. Uh, I just like it so much turned that I just can't imagine not doing it. And then okay. someone asked, what's the best price for house of color paint, especially the candies? You're going to want to buy the candies in a concentrate. Uh, KK, like the KK01 in the half a pint, you know. Best price. Oh, what's the best? Yeah, that's going to be the best price. I don't know what price. I don't. I'm guessing they're like, I can't remember, 55 bucks. Now they're probably more than that now. It depends on the color. Like red's like $80 for candy apple red, I think. Pink's going to be more. Blue, I think, is cheaper, like 49 bucks or something. But buy the concentrate, though, because it, it goes a long ways. Try to avoid buying the really expensive like $200 or $300 quartz that you can get of color because man that's just like you'll do one job and it'll be like an orange they'll call it some crazy color orange passion something sunset you can make the exact same thing with some silver base coat like you just take the silver pigment that I have put it in the, the clear base coat and you got silver you got basically Orion silver, you know, it's not the same thing, but it's something damn close to it. And you're not going to pay all that money. You know, you're not going to pay like, I don't know what Orion silver would be hundred bucks an hour or something. Maybe it's cheaper. I'm just working these edges in. Make sure we get nice crisp edges. I get people sending me pictures sometimes and they're like, well, yeah, the, the leafing and the turning turned out really good. It's just my edges are crappy. And I'm like, it's because you're not spending all the time like this, you know, like really pushing them in. Like if it's, if this is a customer's job, I will literally look through every corner and you can tell, you can see if it's pushed all the way down or you can see like right here, you know, I know you can't see, but like right there, it's kind of bridged on that corner. A little bit and when you pull that it's gonna rip it it's gonna rip it and not into a fine not into a fine line you know like I'm gonna push that edge down working that brush in different directions you know trying to get those bristles in there to to really poke it down another thing I do and which I'm gonna do on this and show you the nice thing about this glue the best thing about this glue is you can double leaf this stuff right over the top. Basically, I'm just going to leaf one more. This is the base layer of leaf. I'm going to put down one more layer of glue, one more leaf on top of this without unmasking it. And that way, when I do spin it, there's a chance you can burn through. Um, it's going to, we're going to be able to avoid that because we have like an extra safety layer of the uh, silver underneath. And that's 
basically that's the reason that but the combination of that and paying attention to my edges are the reason why my leaf turns out really good that uh that what i've done what i've done now yeah i can do that so let me uh where did my oh it's in my pocket let me get let me get it a little better now that you're looking want to look at it <laughs> now you can see that tucked in there better this is my first layer like i was saying i'm gonna layer this with one more uh layer of glue and leaf because the, the glue goes on so thin and the leaf is so thin you're we're not really adding much build to this at all we're just going to add that safety layer of this silver um that way when we spin it if we burn through we still have that one layer underneath Gonna spray right over the top of what I already have. Someone's asking, and he asked it earlier, and I kind of skipped over it. He said, "What's the best way to get started learning airbrush realism and portraits?" Um, hmm, practice. Mm. Portraits, you watch YouTube videos, um, learn how to cut paper stencils really good. What else can I say? A lot of it's practice. Um, remember to thin your paint out a lot because that's really those guys thin out their paint so much and make their paint so transparent to get those realistic looking you know portraits it's pretty crazy all right coat number two and someone says there's a couple questions here um what's the best gun setting for the limeline 1.3 gun i'm running close to 40 psi in fluid control one and one fourth turns in and finally getting less orange pill Spraying the U pull four to whoa, let's see, it's moving up four to one with reducer. Um, yeah, 40 psi is going to be probably more than uh, more than enough than what you need. I would say more like 35 psi. Um, but you know, 40 is fine, just make sure that you're not you're not over covered. A lot of people are over applying. Um, remember, you're going to have the orange peel the first, you know, first or second coat. So it's just natural because you don't have enough clear built up at that point. And I get a lot of people asking me, well, it's just so, you know, I put the first coat on there. There's orange peel all over. Well, that's kind of how it starts. It's like you start with orange peel. It's not until the third coat really um, it starts to smooth out. So a lot of times you just got to be patient and let that orange peel kind of smooth out, especially with that U-pull. Also, you can reduce it a little bit, your last coat. But be okay with the orange peel until your last coat, really. I mean, it'll it'll smooth out. Then someone said, if the second layer is a different color, like copper over silver, will the contrast color show? Yeah, I will. So you'd want to use the same. And then someone gave you a $5 super chat and said, would love to see what you can do with the aluminum foil trick on a motorcycle tank. Oh yeah. I've done, I've actually done it on a motorcycle. It sucks. <laughs> it's hard work, but maybe I'll do it again. I don't know. Maybe I'll do it one more time. Okay. I got the last coat on there. I'm going to give it just one more second to to tack up because I'm get a little bit of a lift off on that. 
Uh, someone said half the art of custom painting is fixing mistakes as they happen. You have to show so many examples and tips in this area that have proven valuable. Oh, you have shown so many. Yeah, yeah. It, and he's exactly right. It's learning, it's learning how to fix your mistakes. It's a lot of what custom paint really is. Because we're bending the rules, you know. We're adding extra layers where extra layers shouldn't be added. We're, you know, uh, adding paint edges. It's not natural in, in, uh, in automotive. You're the rebels. Yeah, we are the rebels. <laughs> Someone said, to save wasting silver or gold leaf, can you cut the sheets in half for thinner stripe strips? Yeah, you can. But it's kind of a natural thing that this stuff gets wasted a little bit. And really, this is this pack's under twenty bucks, so this is going to be like one of the least things. You know, it's not very expensive compared to other things in custom painting for what you get. Like, Put this one down right here. Got a little weird right there. We'll see how that looks. Whoops. It's going to be fine. Usually I like to be perfect on my last layer, but we'll see. Okay, got it. Back with the brush. Someone asked, when are you going to do a full how-to for water slides on tanks? Uh, live? Yeah, I have one. Uh, I have no. a full. Uh, is it a live one? Is that what you're talking about? No. <laughs> oh, a how-to video? Someone said, when are you going to do a full how-to or water slides on tanks. I have three of them. There's three of them out there. There's one I just recently did. That's a full how. -to. Well, it depends on what you mean by full how to. But uh, it, it it's a process. It really is. Like I would be afraid to do one live because <laughs> like oh, I screw up a lot. Like I usually like that last one I did. I did do the transfer two times because I'm, I know for a fact I ripped it once. Oh, yeah, I remember that. But that's the... Uh, that's all it. Fixing the mistakes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the magic of Hollywood. You guys don't know it. All the problems I go through in those videos. Mm -hmm. When you're live, it's like, yeah, you can't hide nothing. All right, that's looking good. Like I said, you kind of just go kind of pounce straight down on it at first. That way you're not wiping away and breaking that leaf before it has a chance to settle down on that glue. So I get um, on the water slide to clarify. He said just to explain when to use white or clear paint for the sealer coat. Okay, so you're going to use white paint on and what he's talking about is when you print out a water slide transfer um, on your inkjet printer. And basically what it is, that transfer material is like a temporary tattoo. If you ever use that material, um, like on your kids, it's like those little tattoos that have the backing on it. They stick to your skin, same kind of stuff, but it, they come in eight and a half by 11 sheets and you can print it out your image uh, with inkjet printer. And uh, once you do that, you're able to, um, 
basically use that and apply it to, you know, motorcycle tank usually or, or a skateboard or whatever you're doing the artwork on. You can transfer it to it and it sticks to it. Uh, one thing about the printer ink is it's not water. It's no, it is water soluble. So if you just take the print, lay it down in the water, the ink just going to run right off of it. Like it's not protected. So if you're using white water slide decal paper, you need to spray clear coat over the top, either clear coat, what better, better yet, clear base coat over the top of the ink before you submerge it. So that way it protects the ink from uh, washing off. And it also allows you to like, when you lay it down and you have to squeegee all the water off, it gives you a little bit of surface protection to be able to like work the water out of it without smearing the ink all around. Um, if you're using white, uh, clear water slide decal paper, you're printed out on clear, then you're going to want to hit it with white base coat. And then you would flip the image around and then it would apply your white base coat would apply directly onto your sanded clear coat. Both, both methods work. Um, if I was to choose one or the other, I would use the white water slide decal paper with the clear over the top. So hopefully that's not too confusing for you guys. You can see I, I have full videos on how I do both ways. And someone said, what's the goofiest, most memorable paint job you did for a customer? The goofiest? Uh, or most memorable? Uh, uh, I would say there was a movie called Bustin' Loose. And it, has, uh, <laughs> it was a comedy. And I painted like a bunch of characters and scenes from that movie, which was really weird. You have to really like that, I guess, bust and loose movie in order to make a whole bike over it. Uh, but yeah, that's probably the most memorable. Back in the days, I did a lot of skulls and fire. I did a lot of the same stuff. What about the naked chick? Oh, yeah. <laughs> painted, oh, yeah. <laughs> Some dude sent me pictures of his naked wife. <laughs> hey, you put this on there? I was like, what the? Well, this was back in the days when, like, it, he actually sent me pictures, so I physically had them. Like, what the hell? Yeah. It was weird. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of different. Uh, someone said, is there a way to tell when clear is about to run or sag? How do you know you're not spraying too much too quick? You just have to kind of get the feel for it. Um, understand that the biggest thing is to understand your first and second coats like i said it's not going to lay out smooth you got to get enough on there in order for it to kind of build up a layer of clear to make it all nice and smooth so your first coat that's what most people make the mistake is they're trying to make it look perfect on their first coat and they end up running it S spray it light on the first coat then spray it light on the second coat and if you're new at new at it spray light on the third coat and just do more coats rather than just trying to hammer it on but um, I guess you can kind of, you know, once you do it right a couple of times, you'll know. Just be patient. Don't uh, do the test. Like the best way to do it is like people say, how long do I wait? Well, it depends on the temperature. It depends on the clear. It depends on the gun. It depends on how you applied it. it. Depends on so many different factors on uh, when it comes to time limits. The best thing you can do is to like touch on an inconspicuous spot. Like say like you have a spot that's taped out and you're spraying just as much clear on that spot as you are the rest of it. If you were to touch it, say you sprayed it 10 minutes ago, if you were to touch it, put your finger on it, pull it up. If it strings up, you're going to want to wait longer. But if it's just tacky, like it just stays tacky but doesn't string up, then you're good for another coat. So that's when it comes when it comes to like spraying clear coat evenly, you know, because you could spray a whole bunch of clear in one spot and it's going to run it and you'll be dry in another spot, which is terrible, you know. Um... You, it's just one of those things you got to get good at. You have to do it right a couple of times and you definitely have to be patient. So allow the three and if you're new, four to five coats because you're spraying lighter than usual. It's fine. Just don't spray heavier. You can get away with those extra coats and take it a little bit longer if you're new. Okay, it looks like I got this.
pretty dang good. My edges look pretty good. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna like get in there and get all get them all perfect, but I'll get them pretty nice. Like I said, if this is a customer's, I would come in and you know really make sure those edges were pressed down. But they look really good right now. Could do a little bit more work right here. We have all night. Yeah, we have all night. Okay, we're ready. <laughs> <laughs> we're good. We're gonna peel this off. Got some pigment on there. This paint job is going to be really subtle. It's going to be cool. When it's clear, it's going to look phenomenal. I can probably actually clear it with uh, that spray can clear. Yeah, do I have some over here? somewhere I think not that stuff we still got to spin it though yeah I have to tell you guys like clear coating and spraying with a gun is is harder than anything I'm doing here, to be honest, you know, uh, a little bit of a stencil left there. Let me make sure I pull that off. Yeah. It's uh, it's something you just have to practice. Like custom paint doing this is always so forgiving. Like you can have jagged edges or a couple things and you really can't even tell that much, but if you run the hell out of a clear coat, I mean, yeah, I'm pretty sure the customer is not going to like that. You gotta, you gotta learn that part of it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pull these tape edges too before I spin it. Okay. There we go. You wanna make sure you're pulling back on it too. Someone said, what's your take on this? I used to use Spray Max 2K cans, and by some miracle, I could repeatedly get deeper, glassier, clear with no buff polish than I could when I did polish afterward. Uh, oh, I, uh... Huh. That's, uh, yeah. I, get it. I, I believe it. You know, if it's so, it that stuff does lay out pretty good. I don't like to cut and polish anything that comes out of a spray can myself. I'm going to use the brush just to get those edges and knock those down a little bit. You can see, like, right there. And same thing with that. I'm gonna hit that with a little bit of glass. You just wanna sniff it. <laughs> we got a little bit of overspray right there. We'll just do that. Okay. All right, we got a spinner here. Uh, 5,000 grit. Uh, works really good. They're out of stock right now. So all I got is the silver one. But they should be back in stock uh, end of this month. So I like to do a 50% overlap. First one. Let's get this at a good angle so you guys are able to see. Yep, 
you can see no burn through. Like, look how clean that is. Usually, if you look like really hard, oh, we're starting to get in there close now. If you look really hard, you would, uh, at, at a lot of people's leaf, you'd see little tiny specks where it burns through. But doing the two, the two layers, it prevents that. When I said 50% overlap, I actually meant more like a 40% overlap because I like to keep the center there. So, yeah, so I don't actually go 50%. You can if you want. You can do whatever you want, but I just feel like if you have that center a little bit, it makes it nicer. Someone asked, uh, have you ever used color changing Hot Wheels paint? Uh, we're getting ready to, yeah. Uh, color changing. Yeah. Yeah. A chameleon. Yeah. We have some, there's actually some in the lime line, uh, lineup of pigments. Someone says, might be a dumb question, but how hard are you pressing when you're spinning? I'm sure most of this is just trial by fire, but thought I'd ask. Um, I'm not pressing very hard. Like, I'm not, I'm, I'm just pressing hard enough. The nice thing is when it's double layered, you can press pretty hard and it's, you're not going to burn through. So you got a lot of leeway with that. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, that definitely... You can see how nice that leafing turned out. So we'll go ahead. Let's grab some clear cup here. Someone said, do you post Limeline products to Australia? Yeah, we're going to be in Australia in um, on Amazon. By the first next year, we'll be in Australia. And then someone said, talking about the color changing Hot Wheels paint, he says, remember when you used to dump the Hot Wheels in the cold, hot and cold water and it would switch from red to blue? Yes. Okay. I thought he might have been talking about that. Um, yeah. Heat, heat changing or whatever. I don't know. Thermo. It's called Thermo. Thermo something. Maybe somebody can chime in that knows better. But yeah, I, uh, I have tested a little bit of that. Um, it's cool. I like it. We should do it. <laughs> so I wanted to show you that spot where it had the paint, the little paint chunk that we, I knew we needed to take care of, but I wanted to show you, but see that paint chunk right there. Like you can totally see it. Like knowing that, knowing that, and if this is a customer's job, you would have taken care of that either with a razor blade a little bit of sandpaper you would have made sure that was super clean right there but okay let's spray i got some 2k clear coat 2k in a can pretty cool stuff um yeah i won't explain how it works but it's cool we'll make sure mix it up Someone said, you flashed the clear, what you got there? I don't think they really got to see. Oh, I have my lid. <laughs> I was shaking it around so crazy, I lost my lid. Um, it's two, you can grab another one off those other cans. It's 2K clear coat, 
in a can. It's basically one part that once it's sprayed on and it mixes with the, the uh, moisture in the air, it turns it into 2K. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's pretty cool stuff. And it has a nice spray pattern, you can see. Okay, usually I pack wrap this off, but it's pretty clean. dribbled on there a little bit. That's weird. Did I have my finger in the way? I think I had my finger in the way. The oh, look, right there. Huh. Well, that's kind of sucks. Yeah, I think I had my finger in the way, and it was, <laughs> that's exactly what was happening. The spray pattern is so wide that it was hitting my glove, you can see. And then it dripped off my glove onto that, onto the panel a bunch of times. Stupid stuff like that, you know, but we're all right. We're going to go ahead and just saturate this and... Someone said, when applying candy over the silver leafing, do you dilute it? I'm sorry, what was that? The, when you... you apply candy? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So somebody's asking if I leave... If that's the one you're asking. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Yes, you do dilute the, the candy. Yes, you you mix the candy concentrate with clear base coat or inner coat clear, and then you reduce it and then spray it over top. The next one, uh, when you do the leafing, do you ever pinstripe edges or just leave them raw? You know, I'm not really much of a pinstripe artist, so I leave them raw. But we're going to learn. Yeah, but I am going to learn, yeah. All right, well, I kind of fudged this one up a little bit. We'll see how it looks. You can see those drips. It has like um, some black. The drips are a little bit black. But I don't know. It's not the most amazing thing I've ever painted. Uh, <laughs> but it's still pretty good. And the leaf turned out great. It's really subtle. All right, but that's it, guys. Appreciate you tuning in. Uh, any more questions real quick? We'll just get them taken care of. Hear yeah, let's hear the quote. Yeah. All right. Lucky, enough that you... Lucky enough that you stayed to the end. This is my quote I wanted to share. It's chase the dreams that make you nervous. Is it? <laughs> Chase the dreams that make you nervous. What do you mean? Is that it? No, oh, that's good. That's great. I like it. Come on. It's a good quote. I probably could have um, been more aggressive with the lace and uh, the black around the edges. But uh, I don't know. Hopefully you guys learned something from this. And, uh, yeah, anything else? I think that's it. We'll see them next Thursday. If you guys want to tune in next Thursday, we'll, we're always going to be here. Next Tuesday, did you say? No, next Thursday. Oh, that's yeah. That's what I said, right? Okay. Next Thursday. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate the super chats. And see you next Tuesday. <laughs> Thursday. All right. <laughs> we're out of here.